just wait for a minute. <laughs> No, no, thank you. Just one more minute. To, to be with you, to worship with you today. Um, you're all very welcome with us. If you've not been with us for a while or if you're visiting with us, um, how lovely it is to see you and have you joining in with us. Um, it is also Local Preacher Sunday this week, so um, welcome Ryan. Uh, Ryan is joining us. He is from the Porter Down Circuit, the organist in Edenderry uh, Methodist Church, a fantastic singer, so we're leaving the microphones on for him. Um, as, as opposed to what we do when I'm up there. Uh, and, uh, and, and so the folk that are watching online, you're in for a treat uh, when you hear um, Ryan sing instead of me. Um, and, and can I welcome you if you're joining us online as well. It is lovely to have you to be able to join with us uh, in this way too. I'm, I'm going to start with doing the announcements and then I'm going to hand over to Ryan to lead us through uh, the rest of the service. Um, but before we do the announcements, let's just be still for a moment. Just come into the presence of God. Love of God, we commit this time to you as a time of gathering together as your people in your presence to bring you worship, to bring you praise, to say to you, you are our God and we are your people. And so we pray your blessing upon us in this time of worship, this time of being together. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. So, sorry Jane, I'm going to take this out so I can see what's going on there. Right, so just to let you know what is happening in the week ahead, and then we'll jump onto a couple of other things. Um, so to remind you that Tuesday evening is our prayer meeting, is an in-person and online prayer meeting, so you can either join us up in the sanctuary, or you can join us on Zoom uh, for, for a time of prayer. And if you need to join, and you've not joined before, ask Michael, ask myself, um, we will give you those um, the meeting ID so that you can log in and join us on Zoom. Uh, on Thursday evening, our Bible studies begin again, so we will start at half past seven in the Ambassador's Room and we continue looking at First Corinthians. Um, if you've not been before and you, you're worried about jumping in halfway through a book of the Bible, don't panic, don't worry, just come along and join us. The conversation and the fellowship um, is just as important as the study. Uh, and, and so do come along uh, and, and join in with us. And next Sunday uh, is our harvest service, and we are looking forward to gathering together here at half past 11 next Sunday to give thanks to God for all his blessings. Uh, if you just jump to the, to the next slide, uh, what we'll be doing is what we, what we did last year as well, is we'll be lifting up, uh, taking a collection for some of the local food banks here in Cookstown. Uh, and, and we'll run that for four weeks just to give you time um, to bring items along. Uh, and um, so, so from next week and, and th the three Sundays after that, um, if you can bring things, it's, it's um, non-perishables. Uh, please remember non-perishables, so any tinned items or dry items, bring them along and um, they'll be distributed amongst the local food banks. What's next? Oh yes, then to remind you of um, the upcoming, when, when the, the Youth and Children's Ministry uh, begins here in the church, the 3rd of October is our Sunday school, uh, and the 10th of October is when basic begins. Uh, those two dates, so just bear those in mind and remember them, uh, and I know that there are a lot of people looking forward um, to those things starting up again. So the 3rd of October for the Sunday school, the 10th of October for uh, the basic. Uh, what, what is not up there? <coughs> is um, Autumn Soul. Autumn Soul is happening on the weekend of uh, the, the 26th, 27th and 28th 
of October. Uh, what is happening this year is, is last year it was all online. Um, this year they are doing a blended version of, um, of Autumn Soul. So Friday night will be online, Saturday will be in person, and the Sunday morning the worship service will be online. So it's happening in that way. Autumn Soul is for 13 to 18 year olds. So um, if you are in that age group and you want to come along, please seriously consider it. Speak to your parents or if you're a parent or a grandparent and you think your child or grandchild would like to come along, have a chat with them. Um, there is a cost involved. So if you're only joining online, it's £12.50 uh, is the online cost. If you're wanting to come along to the in-person Saturday uh, gathering, it is £20. At this stage, um, we, we, we will be going in two cars, so there will be space for people to come along with us on Saturday. Um, if, they, if you want to come along, um, there is space for you. Um, let us know. So, so if this is something you're interested in, speak to Joanne or speak to myself, um, and we will arrange um, the forms and we will arrange everything that's necessary. Uh, but I do want to encourage, if you're 13 to 18 year old, it is an absolute fantastic time. If you've been to, soul, uh, to Soulmates, um, it's, it's, it's the upgrade, well not the upgrade, it's, it's the older version uh, of that. If you, if you had fun um, as, as a 10, 11 or 12 year old going to um, soulmates, uh, you're going to have fun as, as a 15, 16, 17 year old, 14 year old coming along to, um, to Autumn Soul. So I do want to encourage you to think about that if, if you are in that age group to come along uh, and join us. Then there's a couple of things at the back for you on your way out, just to be aware of. So we've still got those lists the last Sunday. I'm going to have them up. We're going to take them. I'm going to take them with me and, and start sorting them out. Um, so there are four lists at the back. If you want to be involved in helping in this area with the live streaming and the sound and the PowerPoint, uh, please put your name down on the list that says Techie Team. Um, if you are wanting to be involved in doing readings during the service, there's a list that says readings. There's another one that says prayers or prayers. You can decide how you want to pronounce it or, or what you want it to mean. If you would like to pray in the church service to do the opening prayer at the beginning of our Sunday morning worship service, put your name on the list that says prayers. And then there's another list that says pastoral care. Is if pastoral care is something that you have a passion for and you want to be involved in and you feel that that's a ministry that God is calling you into, into the life of the church, if you can put your name down uh, on, on that list. Um, and that will be very helpful. There's also a couple of things for you to take home with you. Uh, and and um, so let me run through them. The latest daily bread. Um, if you've not already received it or you're not receiving it at, at, at your home already, um, there are some that have names on and I think there's a few extra copies as well um, of the daily bread uh, on your way out. Do take one of those. Um, Cookstown High School. Uh, every uh, Friday at half past one, no sorry not every Friday, once a month on a Friday uh, at lunchtime um, they have a prayer meeting for parents and for friends of Cookstown High School. So there's this little card that's got the dates on it uh, of, of each of the meetings that run through this year until June. Um, if that is something that you would like to be a part of to go and pray for the young people, for the children, for the staff, um, for the school and for God at work uh, in the school, um, there is the times uh, on this card uh, for when they have their monthly prayer meeting. And then this Saturday you might have heard of an organization um, that is called Abolish Abortion Northern Ireland. Uh, they have been very active in the last few months and they are having a gathering in, um, in Kells and Connor and County Antrim. Um, and here is information uh, for that. It is, it is to talk about and to pray about um, the, the changes uh, that have happened over the last uh, 18 months with regards to the abortion law in Northern Ireland and how that is uh, being implemented. Uh, and, and so there is a flyer like that, um, if you want to collect one of those on your way out as well, and it gives you further information about them. Now for a local preacher Sunday, as a minister, I've spoken far more than I expected to speak. Um, so at this point, I'm going to say, let's be still for a moment, let's pray over these announcements, and then we're going to sing our opening hymn, and I'm going to hand over to Ryan to lead us through the rest of the service. Let us pray. Loving God, for each of these things that we have announced, for the things that are happening in the church in the world ahead, the leaders meeting this week, the prayer meetings, the Bible studies, our harvest, our collection for, for local food banks and the fantastic work that they are doing in the community. Loving God, we pray your presence and your blessing in each of those activities. 
we think of um, the, uh, the prayer meetings that are held in the high school. We are thinking about um, the gathering of people uh, to, to talk about and think about uh, the abortion laws in, in Northern Ireland. Uh, we, we are thinking about Lord Autumn Soul and the young people that will gather together there, Lord, and hear about you and, and hear someone speak to you, speak to them about you in, in, in light of their life stage and, and of all the things that they are, are dealing with and making sense of, Lord, at this stage of their life. And so we pray over them, we pray over the speakers and the organizers, Lord. And we pray over the daily bread, Lord. As, as, as we open it, as we read it, we pray that you will speak into our hearts, that you will speak words to us that, that make us think, wow, that person was thinking of me when they wrote it, and, and, and what's really happening is that you were thinking of us. And you're always thinking of us. And so I pray your blessing over these daily bread books, Lord, that they will just speak your words to us. And so now we commit this time to you, Lord. We pray your blessing as people gathered in your name. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. We're going to stand and we're going to sing our opening hymn together, Great is Thy Faithfulness. I was last here, so it's, it's great to be back again, and thank you to Rowan um, for your 
a bit warm welcome here this morning and um, thank you for welcoming me and bless you in the days ahead as well. Let's just fight, be still again as we come before God in prayer. Let us pray. Father God, we come together today as your people to worship you, to pray for one another and to rejoice that we are your family as we acknowledge you as our God, the giver of life, ruler of all, the beginning and end of all things. We bring to you today our fears and our joys, our hopes, our anxieties, knowing that you are the one who reaches out to us, who welcomes us, and who through Jesus brings us safely into your love and your care. As we've just been singing, we do thank you for your faithfulness, for the countless blessings that you show upon us, Lord. And loving God, you are in this place today, reminding us of your blessings, reminding us of your amazing love, your faithfulness that you have for us. But forgiving God, we admit there have been times when we have tried to go our own way, doing things in our own strength, without you. Forgive us for the times where we have been unfaithful, by our actions, by our words, by our deeds, for the times when we have said hurtful things to others. Forgive us, Lord, and draw us back to you by your Holy Spirit. Come to us, cleanse us, and renew us. So, generous God, thank you for putting your hand out once again today for us to take hold of it. And we thank you that we can put our hand into yours. Knowing that you will lead us, support us, and hold us throughout our lives. And we do thank you that you just do supply our every need and far more besides. So Father God, as we share in this time together, may we give you all the honour and the glory that you alone deserve. And may we know that you are with us in this service today. Amen. And we're going to continue in praise as we sing our second praise song. My Jesus, my Saviour, Lord, there is none like you.
Bible reading today is taken from Psalm 34. Psalm 34, verses 1 to 8. I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us, let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man called, and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and he delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. And we do thank God for his comforting words to us. And we bless it to our hearts. Thanks be to God. And now we come before God in prayer. This time we come to our prayers for others. So let us be still and bow before God in prayer. Father God, we pray for those who need your touch today. We pray for the sick, the troubled, bereaved. For those who are anxious, Lord, at this time, who are even suffering from depression, God, may they know that you are with them. Touch them today. And Father God, these are trying times that we face. But pray, I pray, Lord, that we will know to keep the faith and that God will move by his Spirit. Life brings so many challenges, family, work, health, financial, so many challenges. But Lord, we pray that we will keep the faith. We pray for our country. As if these challenges daily, we uphold our assembly, our politicians, our local councillors, and we pray for wisdom as they make decisions and deal with many challenges ahead. We pray for our church, for all those, Lord, you're connected to this church. We thank you for their witness. We thank you for the leaders of this church, for all who play their part. We pray for our minister here, Rowan, his wife Joanna and the family, Lord, as they continue to minister here. Give them the strength by your spirit, Lord, as they lead and minister to your people. And Lord, we pray, Lord, that this church will remain a beacon of light that shines out, out in this community. A place, Lord, where people can come to meet you. Lord, we pray for our Methodist church. We pray for today, Lord, for local preacher Sunday, Lord, and we pray for all who are preaching your word. 
for all lay preachers, for all ministers. We thank you for each and every one of them as they continue to spread the gospel. And Father God, in a moment of silence, we bring to you our own concerns, the needs of others and ourselves, now in a moment of silence. All powerful God, with simple trust, faith, and quiet confidence, and eager expectation, we put ourselves into your care, knowing that whatever we face and wherever we may find ourselves in the coming days, that you will hold us firm. Take us and use us for your glory. And together we make this prayer in the name of your Son, Jesus, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And just before we come to look at God's word, we will praise God again by singing wonderful grace. spirit will flow from each one of us. Touch us, Lord. And may our eyes be open to see. May our hearts be open to receive and our ears open to hear as you speak to us. 
and may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O merciful Father. Amen. Taste is a powerful sense. I am sure we have all our favourite things that we like to eat, as well as the things that we detest. Our taste buds are a wonderful experience, which we probably take for granted at times. I know I certainly do. Do you know, even in the Bible, it talks about the emptiness of life when we cannot taste. Now, someone apparently who gives up smoking after many years will tell you how they regain their taste buds and how wonderful it is to be able to taste food again. When taste is taken away, something rich in our lives is lost. And here Psalm 34 is a warm invitation where David wants us to taste and see God's goodness for ourselves. Now David was in one of the most dangerous situations of his life. He was down in the dumps, in the pit. But he wants us to praise God with him and trust God to rescue us too, as he did for David. He wants us to look, he wants us to taste, and he wants us to see, to enjoy, to fear, to know God for ourselves. As he, this God delivers his people from every trouble. David wants to convince us to worship God and to experience the joy of trusting him. He is seeking to give us a description of God, of what it is like to really know him, to be in communion with him daily. Now here David does the same thing that we might do if we were attempting to convince a friend to try a new restaurant out. First of all, we might rave about it to our friend, about how great it is, and invite them to come with us. And then we might explain specifically what we liked about the restaurant and the food we ate there. And then finally, we push our friend. Try it. Try it. You'll like it for yourself. And David follows the same pattern here. For first of all, he praises God and invites us to worship with him. And then secondly, he gives us his testimony of God's deliverance. And finally, he pushes us to taste and see for ourselves. So we hear, see here in verse 1 of this psalm that we are reminded that our relationship with God is a daily one. And it is ongoing and ongoing. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be on my mouth. David is talking about a relationship here which is lasting. With having our relationship with God, he wants, God wants us to have daily, regular contact with him as his children. 
And in verse 2, David describes a relationship as one of hope and acceptance. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. So this is also a relationship of those who are in pain. For those maybe who are feeling that they may have feel that they have something to hide and they don't want anyone else to know about. Or for those of us who maybe have doubts, who are maybe possibly struggling with daily life, or an ongoing situation that has got out of hand. But David is showing us here who we can go to once again. He is showing us who we can trust. This is a relationship where we are accepted as who we are, warts and all. Which I find absolutely wonderful. For no matter what we have done, we can come before the one who loves us, who knows us and accepts us as who we are. And there is also immediately in this relationship because God is a God who responds to us. Now sometimes it isn't easy to hear God. So we need to put ourselves in a place to be able to hear him, to get rid of the clutter that's in our minds and in our lives, to block out the noise that is going on around all of us, all around us. For if you're anything like me, times maybe you're juggling a hundred and one things at the one time. We need to put ourselves in a place where we can just be still. A place where we can be still. And however, God is responsive. And how, how many times were you maybe been seeking an answer so desperately and have opened your Bible and have just come across just the right scripture? Or maybe sometimes someone has come along you, alongside you, and said to you just what you needed to hear. Or arrived at your door, or called you on the phone, or sent the right text at just the right time. Or perhaps maybe it's been a devotional or a sermon that has just been for you. Well, I know that all of the above has happened for me. It is not a coincidence. It's God. For we have a God who is involved in our lives who is right there in the middle, who is right there with us. A God who cares about us, about our relationship with the God. But you know, we need to seek him. We need to want, we need to want to be with him. And in verse five, we see here from this psalm, we see a relationship which changes our perspective. For those of us who look at him are radiant. Now I wonder, do you ever notice a young child where they want to be like their dad or even their granddad? You see them copying their mannerisms. Just the other day, I had a visit from my wee niece and she was with her father and I was sitting there and I was watching her and I noticed that she was following him around, she was copying him, she just wanted to be like her dad and that is what it can be like in our relationship with God for that's what God wants us to be. He wants us to follow him 
around. He wants us to be everywhere where he is, to follow his steps, do what he does, copying the example of Jesus. Enjoy the radiance of being in his presence. And by doing that, we become more and more like him. And we see here in verse 7, we are reminded of the power of this relationship. For the angel of the Lord encamps around them. I wonder, do you believe in angels? Like personally, I don't know what they look like. Although there are descriptions of them in the Bible. God is here by his Holy Spirit, by his angels, for the long haul to be encamped. To be encamped is to be permanently placed, and God is permanently placed around us. He is constantly holding us, protecting us, guiding us, watching us, over us, over us right now. There is power in that we don't need to be afraid. But we have to take it a step further. Now we can all sit here and we can all say, well, that's great. We can have this knowledge of knowing that God is with us, that God is watching over us, that he is here protecting us and he accepts us from who we are. But we still need to take it a step further. We have to step out in that knowledge. For we see here, after where David gives us the invitation and the testimony, he continues now in his persuasion by urging us, by pushing us, by nudging us to experience God for ourselves. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you his holy people. For those who fear him lack nothing. The lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. So David here could have said, just said, believe that the Lord is good. And yes, we certainly should believe that. But David is not asking us to affirm our doctrine. He is telling us, he is giving us a command to taste and see. It's been said that the distance from the head to the heart is only 18 inches. Yet, it's also the longest journey that we can take. For perhaps you've experienced that situation where you know just certain truths about God, but you struggle to delight in those truths in your heart. There are plenty of people who historically believe that there was a man called Jesus. But they don't all believe that he was the son of God and that he was able to save them from their sin. It is only when we experience him, experience him, that we know the difference. And you know, I love this taste metaphor because it's so personal. Now I could show you a video of a child eating something sweeter, licking a lovely ice cream. And we could see how their faces light up when it is handed to them. Or we can watch the cookery program like Master Chef on TV and see all that lovely delicious food prepared and look at it 
and see that it is good to eat, that you could almost taste it. But how will we know what it tastes like unless we actually try it? We cannot taste something from a safe distance. There is a commitment involved. So we may all know a lot about Jesus, or think we do. We may be able to quote the chapters or the verses from the Bible and say exactly where it's from. But that's not what I believe that Jesus wants from us or is looking for from us. I think he wants us to come to the Lord Jesus. For he says, if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. And whoever believes in me, as the scriptures have said, out of the heart, out of the heart, will flow rivers of living water. It's the invitation to come to him. Constantly. Daily. Not just a one-off. But always coming to him. Relying on him. Leaning on him with our deepest, our deepest hunger. Our greatest longings. Our passionate desires. And to come to the only one. The only one who can satisfy those desires. It's this willingness to unclench our grip from those things that we say, like, I have to have this. I have to have that. I want to have this. I have to have that job. I have to get that promotion. I have to have the best relationship in the world. I wonder, have you been there? Does it make you happy? It's laying all before Jesus and saying, Lord Jesus, I come to you with a desire that you created within me. That hold that only you can satisfy me. Only you alone. And that's the invitation that I believe that's here in the psalm. In his first letter, the Apostle Peter picks up on this metaphor and describes Christian believers as those who have tasted that the Lord is good. You know, becoming a Christian was always about more than just getting our thinking straight about God. And the same is true for our growth in Christ. We need to keep tasting. We need to keep tasting constantly of the Lord's goodness. We can so easily drift away. And so we need to keep tasting. And maybe that means surrendering, surrendering some area of your life that we've been holding at arm's length from him. And as we do so, pray. Pray that we would taste and see that the Lord is good. Maybe it's turning to him in our times of trial and not looking elsewhere for the refuge and comfort that we need. And as we come to him and we find him faithful, we maybe even taste his goodness. We will taste his goodness in a unique way in maybe the times of trial that we are facing. Or maybe it's reading scripture with this goal of praying each time we open our Bibles, Lord, please help me to taste your goodness today. Maybe it's coming to him in prayer for ourselves, but also for the needs of others. And even if that's not our regular pattern, and as we do so, let that be an opportunity to taste and see the Lord's goodness. David knows the Lord is good. Not only from studying truths about God, 
but from his experience of God. Taste and see, says David. Taste the Lord's greatness, experience his faithfulness, and know firsthand the great blessing of taking refuge in him. And that is what I believe Jesus wants from each of us. So as I finish this morning, will we trust God more? Will we lay it all before him? Will we give him our deepest desires? Will we constantly come to him and say, Lord, there is only this hole that only you can fill. Will you come into it? Will you take me as I am? Will you forgive me for all that I have done? Will we taste and see that the Lord is good? And then, will we be excited to see where he will take us? Amen. Let us take a moment of prayer again. Let us be still for our God. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your comforting word this morning. We thank you for your servant, David, for where he reminds us to taste and to see you as the one who is good to us. And Lord, forgive us for the times, yes, we have come to you maybe in a once off, and we have drifted away. Lord, help us to constantly taste you, to see you. Help us, Lord. Whatever we are facing today, whatever maybe we are feeling, that we come to you as our refuge and our strength. And that we will stay with you. So Lord, as a moment as we step out of this building, may we know that you do encamp around us, that you're permanently with us in the days at all times. But help us to want to have that relationship with you. Help us all, we pray. Amen. We turn to our closing hymn, Guide me, O thy great Jehovah. <coughs>
taste and see that he is good. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen.